to dig. Hello. Welcome. I'd like to invite you to just enjoy the experience that we're about to encounter. I'd like to introduce to you a man of a very humble beginning, a man that was able to overcome the horrific misclassification of special education. A caring man, a man that will encourage you because he's been there and done that. And I'd like to encourage you to keep an open mind and be empowered to change your life. I'd like to present to you a man of men, Richard Butley. Welcome to Did You Know podcast, your host, Richard Udley, dedicated to the African-American viewers. The program is aimed to celebrate African-American culture and deal with the real and relevant topics that impact the everyday lives of the African-American community through frank and insightful dialogue with local and national influencers. Every day, there is another horrible, discouraging news story, directly or indirectly, impacting African Americans. But we need to look at the shining stars in the galaxy of Black America. It is time to tell our stories. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to another Did You Know? What am I going to start out with today? I guess, what, are, what kind of world are we living in? I am so, so, so disappointed and hurt. Enough is enough. I want to talk about shootings. Isn't it something you can't even go to the supermarket? You can't send your kids to school. What are we, what is this world becoming? Mm. Not only what is this world becoming, but at the same time, we're going to have to do a little better in our neighborhoods as well. Every time there's news of mass shootings, we go through the same old thing, talk about gun control, talk about policing. Uh, we talk about how people die with guns and then we get the backlash. Those who's for it, those against it. I'm gonna ask all of you this evening, I'm gonna give all of you an assignment. And that assignment is, I want all of you to read the second amendment. Cause you always hear about, you don't want nobody to trample on the second amendment. The Second Amendment allows us to have our guns. Well, I want you to read the Second Amendment and tell me how you interpret that. I know the Second Amendment says that a militia, that's what the guns were for to protect the community that you lived in, but we didn't have a military then. We didn't have the National Guard then. We got the National Guard now. There's nothing in the Second Amendment that says every human being should have a gun. There's no way it says that. But we got so much to talk about today, and I'm going to bring Tony Ross on with me now, because uh, we're going to talk about this. We're going to have a frank discussion. We're going to talk about gun violence, violence, and then we're going to talk politics. And we're going to be hard tonight. I ain't taking no hostages. You know, one of my biggest concerns is, and I keep telling our community this, we have to look out for ourselves. We have to take some responsibility in our own neighborhoods. We keep waiting on somebody riding through the neighborhood to help us. And that's not gonna happen. It's our responsibility. Just like I always hear people say, schools don't teach our kids how to read and write. Well, guess what? Parents, grandparents, uncles, nephews, Teach them how to read and write then if you ain't happy the way they read and write. Some of you out there, you'll teach them how to play sports. So teach them how to read and write. Let's take some responsibility ourselves because I think it's very, I think it's very important. 
Well, let's start talking about these mass killings. Let's take the one in Philadelphia first. One person's in custody already from the shooting. Three killed and 11 wounded. Ain't that crazy? People went to Philadelphia, down to South Philadelphia, just to enjoy themselves. And they weren't bothering nobody. Mm -hmm. Authority said the gunfire started with a physical altercation between two people. So two people yeah. got an altercation, and so they're going to disrupt the whole neighborhood shooting. Authorities said that the gunfire started with two, two people, and both of them began firing a total of 17 shots at each other. Now that's crazy. You know what that tells me? Disregard of anybody else. Disregard of human life. I'm not going to be kind today. If you disregard human life, then that's on you. But that don't mean you need to disregard my life. God. I'm cut cutting, I'm cutting to the chase today. We got to speak up. I mean, there were other shootings. A drive-by shooting in South Carolina high school graduation party last Saturday night. Killed a woman mm -hmm. and wounded seven at a graduation party. Whose responsibility is? We got to start taking responsibility. Three people died early shooting in Saginaw, Michigan. Two people were injured. And what? You're scared to go to the grocery store. Somebody goes to the grocery store. Mind their own business. You expect when you go to the grocery store, you get what you order or what you go to get and you hope to come home. That's what you hope. When you send your kids to school, you hope they go to school. Now they're talking about putting guards in the schools, having retired policemen go in schools, have retired military go in schools. Can you imagine the thought process of young people, what they expect? They go to school to learn. And school used to be going to school to have fun. You look forward to going to school to see your friends. And now you got to go in there and see armed guards. What is that telling our society? And it's even greater for those people that are minorities, whether you're African-American, Latino or whatever, and all of a sudden you're going to school and you see nothing but armed guards. So I want you to think about it, ladies and gentlemen. So I want a lot of you to look at the Second Amendment because everybody throws it out all the time. That's all they talk about. So, Tony, what do you think about all these shootings? Well, Richard, I couldn't say it better myself than what you've articulated. I mean, with the uh, Philadelphia shooting in particular, you know, that is just such a shame that it, that two people, well, I think they've now gotten two people, arrest, two people arrested. There's a third person I think they're not going to charge, but it just doesn't make any sense that, you know, th two, three or two or three people could cause that kind of mayhem. It's, it's, it's insane. Well, I mean, we have to take some, you know, we, we have to take some responsibility in our communities, and we have to stop telling folks, we're not gonna allow this in our communities. You know, we talk about it, we talk a good game. It's just like now, we talk about the mass shootings. So we see all the TV commercials and all everybody comes on with these buzz so, Oh yeah, we need to do something, we need to do something. Well, when are we gonna do something about it? When is somebody well, gonna take responsibility? We have elected officials. And they're all saying, well, I don't know. You know, it shouldn't be about a Democratic thing, a Republican thing. What it should be about is human life. Well, the thing about all of the shootings that you so referenced, the one thing that is one the common denominator is the access to the guns. And we got to somehow deal with that. And that goes to your point, Richard, that it's not a Democrat or Republican issue it's a human life issue so you know you could say you know people can do they get into a confrontation or a, a mass a mass murderer is on a strike or is on the on the prowl but if he can't get the gun then he's not legal liable to kill hundreds or tens of th tens or twenty people so that's what we got to try to get to is to try to get to the access to the guns 
And I mean, and I'm not talking about, you know, uh, handguns or things like that, but we're talking about AR-15s and, and things of that nature that need to be uh, need to be outlawed, I, in my opinion. Well, it doesn't seem to work that way. Even common gun laws, things that we want, don't seem to go anywhere. Right. Why do you think that is? Well, I, I think, you know, we have one party in particular that is at the altar of the NRA, and they um, really don't want to uh, uh, afford to uh, get that party, the NRA, upset at them, or they won't be in office. And that's the, that's what you're getting to, Richard. They have that type of power and control. They they, they that their elected officials listen to them. They say, "Listen, you listen to us, or you're not going to be in office." I'll give you an example. In Buffalo, there's a right next to the, the district. That, help, that houses the uh, supermarket, which had this tragic shooting a couple weeks ago. Uh, it's a Republican district leading towards the president. And the, and the Republican congressman said, you know, I just think, you know, we, we should do something to, to, to reduce the guns. Man, they put so much money in against this guy already. And now already he's not running again this time. In a, in a, in a matter of days, they put so much pressure on him. So what, 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 we're, what I think what we need to do is put the same amount of pressure on the people that we elect, either you put it, if you do what we want, are we going to remove you? You're out. So what you're saying is we're going to have to start rewarding and punishing Absolutely. our elected officials, just like the Republican Party is doing. We need to take that on as a people, because I keep telling people we have to look out for our own vested interests. If we don't do that, then shame on us. It's just like history. Nobody wants to talk about our history, but if we ain't got enough sense to talk about our history and tell our people about our own history, then shame on us. Why we keep waiting on somebody else to tell us about our history? So now all of a sudden, so we need to punish those people who won't look out for our community. And no question, Richard, as you know, I like to say, Pete, there's two reasons why a politician will do will, will take action. Either they will do it to make, benefit themselves and make people vote for them. Or they're afraid that we're going to vote against them. That's that's the reality of politics. They they will do what they do based on what we do. So that's what we got to try to get get organized. Is we will reward and punish you based on your activity. I mean, I read all kinds of comments, like you read all kinds of comments. I mean, I hear such such crazy things. Like, I mean, people say, "Well, oh, you know." Why are you all killing your own people? I say, pardon me? Why are you all killing your own people? And I say, I don't understand what you mean. Right. Like, I don't understand when they say they took the word defunding the police and took that whole out of character. I don't know anybody in any community that don't want police to come when they need them. I right. Don't know Absolutely. But they're trying to say, well, that's what part of the problem is. They don't want police. Well, I think the gun problem has, the gun problem, I think, has a couple of different issues. I mean, they don't talk about, you know, let's look at Buffalo. That person decided he was going to kill as many Black people as he could get to. So there's an issue about domestic terrorism and white racism. Um, there's an issue in, in, in Texas where he was crazy a bit. You know, they went through, he shot his grandmother in the face. So he, he was a sick person. He shouldn't have had a gun. So we have to we have two laws that people, I think 90% of the people basically agree in this country. Red flag laws and and uh, barring the AR-15. Now, why can't we get it done? I don't, or background checks. I'm sorry, background checks. Why can't we get those two things done? And those are two things that we ought to be able to go step to any politician, Democrat or Republican, and say either you get this done or we're going to put somebody in who can get it done. But you... We got everybody at this point, a lot of elected officials have come to the conclusion they have no guts, no right. guts. They're scared to step up, step up to protect the masses of people. Yeah. So, so my thing is, and I keep telling everybody, politics is local. Yep. So therefore... We got to start doing what everybody else do. We need to reward those who
who look out for our vested interests and can count on us, whether it's through votes or through campaign contributions or, or whatever. And those who are against us, we need to make sure they don't get reelected. The yep. arrogance of the elected officials in this country is a disgrace. And I'm very upset. I'm upset because we keep having the same conversation. I've been having it for all these years, the same old conversation. And, and everybody you know, wants Richard, to point somebody else. And you know, Richard, the other thing is they just they wait people out. They're waiting to see, well, the next news cycle, because then some new uh, thing will pop up on the, in the people's minds and they'll forget about this. So we got to be really sustained in our efforts to get this gun reform and these type of uh, reforms through. Because if not, they're just going to wait till the next uh, news cycle and just say, oh, well, they're going to forget about it. Let's move, they're going to move on. Let's move on to something else. That's their, that's their attitude of a lot of our politicians, unfortunately. I, as I said a few minutes ago, we as a people have to start taking some responsibility. We know that we have mental health issues in our community. We need to address them. We all know that there are people out there shouldn't have no gun. We know that they shouldn't have any guns. We need to step up to the plate because we don't need them to hurt themselves and we don't need them to hurt anybody else. Right. We need to take that kind of responsibility and reach out to those in mental health. We need to reach out to those who are just so angry they, they, they don't care. They want to shoot up everybody. This ain't the wild, wild west. Yeah. These people go to the grocery store to get something to eat. They didn't go there thinking they was in the wild, wild west. And, or, and, and to, raise, to meet your point, Richard, as well, you know, the, another issue is they allow these 18-year-old people to buy body armor and things of nature. Like the, the, the shooter in Buffalo had body armor on. So there was a retired police officer from Buffalo, who bravely tried to sit, who, who actually tried to shoot, actually shot him, but it didn't affect him because he had he had body armor. No, he got it. That that doesn't make sense, man. That that's a that's a common sense reform we can we can make a reality. Nobody should be able to buy buy body armor. I mean, why why would you need to buy body armor? So you got people now scared to go to grocery store. Mm -hmm. People scared to go to church. You yeah. got people that go to church to worship. Uh, you got people scared to send their kids to school. So now you're worried about them learning to read and write. You got to worry about them reading, writing, and be safe. You know, hope they come home. That's right. So I think that all of us need to hold everybody accountable. So those of you out there, you need to find out What's going on in your school districts? I mean, just think about that. A lot of these kids are going through drills of going under like when, when mm -hmm. I was growing up. I know I'm dating, I know I'm dating myself, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> when they used to say the bomb was gonna come and we all ran and got up under the under the desk. I, I ain't figured that one out yet. Now I do, I, but I didn't. And under the desk. And you'll be scared. So now you got these kids saying, Oh, get under the desk because somebody might come in and shoot you. So how can you really concentrate on learning when as soon as you, you know, you're paranoid? It's just like anything else. We become paranoid about everything, no matter what it is, good, bad, or indifferent. Right. So I'm saying out there to my audience that we, we got to be more cognizant of what's going on around us, but we got to step up and, and look out for our, 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 our community. So if all of you are for guns and not no way it's not guns. I mean, if you I have a lot of friends that got guns. I have some friends that got too many guns, but they got guns. <laughs> and they hunt. And there's nothing wrong with hunting. You know, but I don't know why you need a, 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 something that's gonna shoot a lot of rounds. Right. Because, you know, if you use that kind of weapon going out there to shoot a deer, there wouldn't be no deer left because you done shot all the meat up. So it That's makes right. no sense. So their logic is not even there. Right. And I'm going to end it up. We're going to move on to this election stuff. But what gets me 
and said, I get sick and tired of hearing everybody tell me, oh, my second amendment, or they'll tell me I don't vote for Democrats because they want to take my gun. And I said, where do you get that from? I'm telling you, Richard, they want to take my guns. I heard that about Obama. I heard that about any time they want to take my gun. Nobody want to take your guns. And the Second Amendment don't read like you've been interpreted, but it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. But there is no excuse for a kid 18 years old going to go buy two guns. He didn't buy one, he bought two. Mm -hmm. and nobody questioned it. Bought it legally. Bought the weapon legally. Yep. Bought two of them. I mean, the first mm -hmm. thing you say is, well, why you why you need two? That would be the logic course that most people would say. Why you need two of them? Not just one. Yep. Why you need two? Yep. Well, I'm saddened of all the people that's going through grievance. And you know, I tell people this all the time. It's not only the people that got shot, but the person doing the shooting affects his family or her family or right. whatever family as well. Yes. So it, it, it's more than just about them. So I'm just telling some people out there, you know, you need to be responsible. And like I said, I keep bringing up Philadelphia because I'm so upset. Two people got in a tussle and then he's going to shoot 17 times bullets. Mm -hmm. They had to be between their cells. That's crazy. Yeah. And they also, and we ought to teach everybody, like you said, there's a, a, a way to resolve differences without shooting people. I mean, it just, this doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me. And I know, I mean, I don't want to say it'd be dating myself because, you know, when I was growing up, there was about, I guess, fist fights. And then if it went about fist fights, I guess they had them little knives. They would stab you with it if it died. Uh, whatever, you know, them little pin knives everybody used to carry. would give you a scratch. But now it's crazy. And, and, and But the logic of why people are dying. And they'll say to them, well, why did you shoot? They disrespected me. They didn't say yeah. hi to me, stepped on my toes or stepped on my shoes. Is it worth dying? And now mm. is it worth killing somebody for? But is it worth you? And I'm not just in general. Is it worth that person to spend the rest of their life locked up? Yeah. For the rest of their life locked up. Mm. Your freedom is gone. Your freedom is gone. And when your freedom is gone, it not only affects you because you're locked up, but it affects your family too because they can't give you the love because you're not here. And you say, I'm sorry, but you can't bring those people back. Yep. So, do you have any wisdom you want to say about the gun before we move on to politics? I think you, you said it so beautifully. You know, we just got to figure out a way to one, reward and punish politicians who don't do what needs to be done and what we want to be done and we got to work with each other to to, uh, to teach our people our young people and in some cases our middle-aged and older people to to uh come together and be, find ways to settle uh, differences without shooting people it doesn't make any sense to me okay and i'm gonna leave my audience with this i'm gonna use the word playbook so why don't we just start using the Republican playbook that if you don't do what I want you to do, I'm going to vote you out. So if you don't want to do gun control, well, we're going to vote you out because that's why they don't vote on it because they're scared of their constituents because they're saying their constituents saying, leave the gun law alone. So yeah. they don't vote for it. And then on the Democratic side or the independent side, we just sit there and go, Oh, well, okay. Well, we got to step up to the plate too. Mm -hmm. So I think that I'm, I'm telling my audience out there, we're going to take on the playbook too. You don't do what we want you to do, then we ain't going to reward you. Well, you know, it's kind of funny, Richard, you know, just speaking of this, now we're going into the elections and uh, in the U.S. Senate race, and I want to know we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. But uh, with the... Uh, with the uh, Democratic primary with uh, Malcolm Kenyatta, Connor Lamb, and uh, John Fetterman, I, I really came to be, I guess my position on it came to be with a lot of other people. 
I just didn't want another Joe Manchin. I just decided, no, 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 no there is no compromise with the Republicans. I, just give me somebody who's going to be do the things that we want. And that's how I decided to uh, vote. But, you know, but because I just said, you know, Connor, you're a nice person, but it doesn't you, you, it doesn't work to, to compromise with the other side. So okay. I, I know how people feel. All right. Well, let's move on right to the uh, U.S. Senate, which is probably one of the most important races in the Commonwealth. It's the most important race. And I want to bring up this while, as we get started. Now, we know it's going to be Dr. Oz. Mm. We know that. But here, here's where the here's what the part that bugs me. They've been talking about election integrity election integrity, and all of a sudden, Dr. Oz, McCormick's in a tight race. All of a sudden, McCormick says, oh, them, nine, uh, them, them votes that you wouldn't, them, them ballots that don't have signatures, I want you to count. When it's for them, they're for it all. When they're, in, they're not for it. That bugs me. The other thing that bugs me, all of you who got sworn into office in January, and you're questioning the integrity of the last race in November, then you need to resign because you did not legitimately get elected. That's what you're saying. You're saying that like, the election was tainted, but yet you got elected and you said it's okay. Right. You can't have it both ways, folks. And we're going to keep calling you out on it. Well, you gotta like, you gotta love it. The president, you know, when the, the elections happened, and ended on the election night. He told uh, Doctor Oz just just to declare victory. I mean, what kind of stuff is that? You know, they hadn't even counted the votes. Well, that's why it's important that we show that we are up on what's going on. Now we got Doctor Oz. It ain't been around, but he, yeah, he's in Pennsylvania now. And he's running on the Republican side. And all the people that attacked him on the Republican side, most of them are saying, well, he's all right. He's better than Josh Shapiro. How's he better than? We mean Fetterman. So mean what happens Fetterman. is, what happened, I mean, um, Fetterman. So what happens is the Republicans fall in line. Yep. We as Democrats, we don't fall in line. We're going to have to start falling in line using the Republican playbook. We got to be as, just as smart as they are. Yeah. Because they've outmaneuvered us too many times. Yeah. And when I say outmaneuver us too many times, it's about our best, it's about our best, it's about our best of interest. Yeah. But, yeah. but what's upsetting me is that you, you know, you want to talk about the integrity of the election. But at the same time, when it's convenient for you, you want to use it. And I thought about it. And I want to just plant a seed to my audience out there. Do you realize in this last presidential election, with all the shenanigans that went on, and all the question of all the votes, do you realize there was a plan to take the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania votes, all the votes in the general election, and to say, guess what? Your vote don't count. That's what they tried to tell you. They tried to tell you and me our votes didn't count. Think about it. That's what they wanted to do. Am I right or wrong, Tony? Yeah, you're right, Richard. That's exactly what they were planning on doing. They wanted to decertify the votes in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Yeah. Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. Your vote, Democrat, Republican, Independent. Think about it. Your aunt's vote, your dad's vote, your sister's vote. They pretty want to say that our votes didn't mean anything. And they're still pushing that foolishness on right today. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, there's a bill this week, uh, well, a controversial bill that eliminates residence requirements for poll watchers. 
and, and want to watch people count ballots because they say they don't trust them. And this was passed, this went to the, on, the Senate, passed the state Senate on Monday. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to, we got to, I keep telling you, we got to stay up what's going on. I could tell you what the score is, uh, the Boston Celtics and the, and the Golden State Warriors. I could tell right. you what the Phillies and the Pirates or, or the Eagles or, or the Steelers. But we got to keep a scorecard on what's going on. It affects our lives. Our lives. The rest of that's of entertainment. And there's all people making big money. But we got to step up to see what's going on. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. They're talking about the integrity of the elections in Pennsylvania. They're saying that, you know, they don't want, they want more poll watchers. Why do you need more poll watchers? You know why they want more polls? Because they think they're going to intimidate somebody. Right, right, right. And they say, it ain't been a problem all this time. I, all the years I've been involved in, in politics and elections, I ain't heard nobody complain about poll watchers or they want to go in and, and, and be six feet from and watch them count the votes. I mean, what do you think about that, Tony? Well, basically what you're saying, Richard, and I would have to agree with you, they're, they're starting to set up, they're saying, we, we, we're going to win. Doesn't matter who, whether who really won the election, we're, we're winning the election. It's in that we are, we are the, we, we are determining who are going to win. And that, that is not right. That's not American. And I think, you know, that alone should get people motivated to get involved in the election. But also we have other issues such as the, the right to choose coming up, you know, and we, and the, and the Republicans, all they really cared about was getting to control of the Supreme Court. And now we're going to have to fight to get it back. You know, we're going to have to fight to get it back. So, so I think, you know, there are a lot of issues out there that we need to get get up, uh, get up on uh, right away. Okay. We might as well, we're going to be tossing around. Let's go to the Supreme Court. Right. Uh, so I'm going to ask you your opinion and view on the United States Supreme Court. Well, what, what do you want to say about it? <laughs> the Republicans, they, they got control. They, they, they followed the plan. They did, their, they did their work. They followed it. They did the long game. That's they right. Did. That's what they did. People think that um, this whole thing uh, with Roe just popped up. They've been playing this for years. Years. And now the, the the decision which they will overturn or Roe v. Wade it looks like they they they, they set up to they could possibly go after gay marriage next. Oh, there's gonna be a whole lot of them. That's oh, what I'm saying. That's why I keep saying you vote your best in interest. You see, <laughs> all of you like, oh, it don't make no difference. It did make a difference. Donald Trump stacked the court on you. Mm -hmm. Now he stacked the court on you. Mitch the McConnell stop it because when when Obama had a pick, he said, "Guess what? I'm not bringing that person up for confirmation." Yep. And then when Biden got a pick, they treated that woman so bad, but she kept her dignity and she's smart. And they tried to find things, tried to find things. So the Supreme Court, so I'm just telling people again, vested interest. I'm going to keep bringing that up. You're going to get sick of me here. I'll keep vested interest. So all of you down here saying, well, it don't make a difference. If you believe that way, you're going to get a rude awakening. So don't be crying when you get the shafted. Yes. Don't get the shafted. Many of you liberal women who said, oh, I, I'm, I'm conservative and blah, blah, this here and blah, blah, this. And now you're concerned about the rope decision. Up oh, too late. Those of you who say, oh, I'm not for, you know, I want to be whatever. They may overturn that. And you keep watching, they may overturn a lot of things. A lot of things, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. This might just be the tip of the iceberg. We understand now the importance of Supreme Court judges, not only federal, but state. 
Yes. That's why I keep telling all of you, the judicial candidates are so important. That's why we need to know who our judges are, who our mm. district attorneys are, who our district justices are. They affect your life, ladies and gentlemen. You can't wait till the horse is already gone up, up the road. And you say, oh, I wish I would have known. You know now. Yeah. We, we can only plead ignorance for so long. And we have pleaded ignorance for a long time. We have, and nobody doesn't call us on it. And so I'm going to take it upon myself to call us on it. Because I get tired of hearing people, I go places, people have conversations, and they want to focus on things that's it's so not meaningful. Mm -hmm. I mean, even this whole thing with, I don't want to tell nobody about the history of what went, what went down, down the road. We only should care about what happened today. You need to know your history of yesterday to mm -hmm. know what you're dealing with today. And then you compare for what you're going to do tomorrow. But what is that about? Ignorance. They want you to be ignorant. That's why they didn't want us to learn how to read. Didn't want to learn how to write. It's all balancing, ladies and gentlemen. Am I right or wrong, Tony? I, I think you're right, Richard. I mean, there's so many issues going on right now at the federal level and the state level that affect us and also at the local level in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh and other areas that, you know, we don't have to pay attention because there's other people paying attention. That's the other thing that I think that you're really getting at, Richard. If you if you don't pay attention, that your your uh, neighbor or your or some other people will pay attention for you, and maybe will not, and then it will not act in your best interest in the government and the politicians. So that's another reason is we need to start paying attention. Well, you better start paying attention. I, I, I'll tell people how to pay attention. I'm gonna tell you how to pay attention real well. Those of you who live in Harrisburg or Philadelphia and you drive to Pittsburgh, as soon as you go past Harrisburg, just look around, ladies and gentlemen. Those of you that live in central Pennsylvania, just drive down the road, ladies and gentlemen. You'll get a rude awakening. Mm -hmm. Those of you in Philadelphia, you might have one idea in the city or the county but just drive around. Just drive around. It'll give you a reality check. It's, it's not, we, we got to do a better job. And I'm so mad. I'm so frustrated. I'm sure you can see it on my face and my voice because we keep having these conversations. And I guess I'm going to keep saying and saying it and hope that it'll catch on. It's going to catch on because I'm going to start saying it from now on. We're going to do the GOP playbook. I like that. I like that, Richard. I like that. That's right. GOP playbook. That, they got tragedy. They they long gamers. It we works. Sleep. It works. That's why it we got to take it. And we sleep at the wheel. Yep. You know, I, uh, who's uh, think about it? Doctor Oz could be your next U.S. senator. Senator. Yep. He didn't live in Pennsylvania, but could be your U.S. senator. And he already and letting you know that. Here's it gets me. He is a citizen in another country. Right, Turkey. Huh? Turkey, the country Turkey. of Turkey. There's the reason I'm saying this. But when they get mad at me, what did they tell me? Go back to where? <laughs> Go back to Africa. That's what they're pretty well telling me. Yep. Say, go back where? Go back where? Go back where? See, I try to put it in a perspective. Say, go back. I tell people, go back where? And I always tell people this, and they get upset with me. They say, well, you know, if you don't like it here, go back, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I say, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. You weren't here either. No. Nope. The Native American was here, but you wasn't here. Right. We're all immigrants. We're all immigrants. Some willingly and some not willingly. That's yeah, that's so true. Yeah, I call it as I see it now. I, I'm, I'm, I'm at that point in my life I can say what I want now. And well, well, Richard, what do you think about our governor's race? Well, huh, let's go with the governor's race. Here we had many people running on 
the GOP side. When they thought the person that became the person that's going to be on the general ballot, they attacked him, they trashed him. Even he's a senator, they took him off some committees because they thought that he would not be a good governor. Some of them, they questioned his sound mind and some of his crazy thoughts. <laughs> and he wins. And what they say, oh, well, we can be with him. Oh, he's going to be better than the Democrat. He's going to be better than blah, blah, blah. How do you compare the Democrat and the Republican? How do you compare Doug and how do you compare Josh? How do you compare them? There is a comparison, but yet Republicans don't care. Right. All fall in line and support it is what bugs me. That's why I keep bringing up our vested interests. What's he yep. going to do? Us? I mean, what, what's he going to do? He already told you what he's going to do. Yeah. He done told you, uh, those of you who are so concerned about the Supreme Court, Wavy Road, he done already told you what he's going to do about the abortion issue. Right. He done told you. So you already know where he's coming from. That's right. You're getting whacked in Pennsylvania. That's what he pretty well tell you. If he's in there, you don't need the Supreme Court voice. He's going to go. Yep. That's told right. You. Those of you who say, oh, I like the mail-in voting. I just think the mail-in voting is so good, blah, blah, blah. That's gone if he's a governor. He done told you it's gone. He told you it's gone. And guess what? He done told everybody. These are the things I believe in. These are the plans I stand for. And guess what? I stand up for him. He's another one. He's another one running around here. He questioned the election. He questioned it. He took people to the to the to, to the Capitol to question the election. Then what I'm saying to him, what he should have done then, when all his fellow senator Republicans got elected. And when they got swore in in January, he should have got up and said, oh, should have been in, in the Senate chambers. So, oh, can't get swore in because none of you are legitimate. None of you really got elected. See what I'm saying? It's good for some things and not good for things. That's like I just brought up with the McCormick thing. All of a sudden, you thought the whole mail-in voting and and it was should have been trashed and and you didn't sign that if you didn't sign it then don't count it and blah blah and then when you come up for 900 oh i think you should count everything <laughs> oh i think you should count everything well wait a minute you just see it but that's what the republicans do for a letter out and up there he just knew he was gonna win he thought he was gonna win he knew he was gonna win Mm -hmm. and got beat pretty stoutly and he got I beat think. and he blamed it on everybody and everything but him yep and then remember Trump endorsed him the first time but didn't endorse him this time yep why didn't he endorse him this time because you was a loser against Casey yep people have to go back and look at these things to understand these things, but now where's Belletta? Oh, I, I, I'm I'm foreign. You 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 said some bad things about him. Oh, you said bad. how about Senator Corman? That's interesting. I, Senator Corman with, with the leader in the Senate was doing battle with Senator Mastriano the whole time, and then I, and then Corman said that he jumped, he got out the race, then he got back in the race because. Uh, president, former President Trump told him to get back in. Now, how dumb does that look? And he knows better. 
Yep. He knows better. He's in the race. He waits almost last, and then he gets back out. Then he gets back in. And then some of them that ran for governor realize that my man was going to win. And he yep. said, well, we, we can't be for him because he, he, we don't want him to win, but he won anyway. Yep. Why did he win? He won because I can say one thing. He stayed true to who he was. He didn't, yes, he did. He ain't wavered. You got to give him that. You got to give him that respect. But my point is, he done told you what he stands for. Yep. So and I, and I have to say that he ran a different type of campaign, at least from my perspective. He didn't get able to do a lot of commercials. He just said he stayed off of it. He said because he put. put he, I think he realized he would put, he was subject to some uh, criticisms. So he, he kept his campaign low, low key. Right. He didn't really run no commercials. No, he didn't. He didn't run no commercials. He didn't have to. Yep. All the all the all the Trumpers knew where he was. He knew where they were, and he he just he just um, he just uh, uh campaigned to them really. And some of you out there that are Trumpsters and you believe in whatever, think about this. Don't forget your, your vested interest. Your vested interest. Nope. I keep telling everybody politics is, is, is local. So therefore, here's my concerns, and I hear it all the time. You know, gas prices is up, this is up, and this is up. And I've heard some Democrats say, well, I ain't voting for no Democrat in the general election. I ain't voting mm -hmm. for, oh, you're not. No, I ain't voting for them. So you're not going to vote for no Democrats because you're mad at what's going on. So let me just tell you this. And you heard it here tonight. I don't want to hear you crying next February and March when they get right. it. And you think you got it bad now, it's going to be worse. And I, mm -hmm. think, I think that's where we got to go. I think we got to say, yeah, we there's pain. And none of us happy. I don't know anybody happy to pay all this money for gas. Five dollars a gallon. Happy. Five dollars a gallon. I don't know anybody's happy for um, no baby formula. And I don't know who's happy that all this. I don't know of anybody that is happy about inflation. I don't know anybody. But you want to believe that everything going to be better. And you ain't seen nothing yet. And the reason I say you ain't seen that, they've already told you what they're going to do. Mm. It ain't like you got to wait till February and March. They done told you. The governor on the GOPs, I done told you what he's going to do. You ain't got to guess. And, well, I think he might do this, or I think he might do that. No, he done told you what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. He done told you. We got to have people that will fight for us. Yep. I know some of you don't like the Fetterman for a, a lot of reasons, and I you, know, you got your reasons. But is Dr. Oz going to be a little better? I'm just saying. Oh. Dr. Oz then told you, yet you question. And here's the part I'm bringing up. And people get mad at me all sometimes because I like to bring references. Think about this. Here's a man that came from somewhere else and you ain't asked him nothing about who he is, where he is, or where he came from. But nope. yet, audience, I'm asking you this question. <laughs> Just think if you would have ran, would they would have asked you? <laughs> That's all I'm asking you. We already I, know. I, I ain't saying you, you ran, you come on. I'm not saying, I'm not, audience, I ain't saying nothing. I, I want you to think. That's why I call this Did You Know? Because I can say what I want on this program. And I put that, that, that the purpose of this program is so that we can have our own conversation. Right. Our own conversation. It has nothing to do with, I call it reality check. Reality check. I just asked a question. Any of you out there, 
all my listening audience, all my friends, all of you. If you ran, you think you would have got the same pass or going to get the Good. same pass? That's all I ask. I'm not even going to debate what I just asked you. We all have gone through double standards, triple standards, but all of a sudden, it's called upon us to be fair. You know, how do you, and I'm hard on everybody, how do you, and I see some of these ministers out there, some of the crazy things that they say. Oh, yes. Come on, folks. God loved everybody. You know, yep. if you off, you'd be surprised. I just want some of you out there to know, because I did have my DNA done. <laughs> mm. I might be related to some of y'all down the road some kind of way. <laughs> I'm not saying I wanted to be that way, but that's just the way that ended up. So be careful what you say and be careful what you call people. Mm, yes. Because tomorrow they may knock on your door and say, what's going on, cuz? <laughs> so now, right. You know, I'm calling it today. I'm just, I'm, I'm so upset because they want to blame everything. I saw a senator the other day. He blamed the, the, all the black folks killing black folks. I said, I know. He yeah, the guy in Arizona. I said, no, what did he just say? He said, oh, you're black folks, you're black folks. <laughs> I know way people coming to me and say, hey, why y'all shoot each other? Or y'all want to defend the police. And don't get me started on Black Lives Matter. Don't get me started on that. Because I tell everybody, Black Lives do matter. And I was taught Black Lives Matter. But my parents never taught me that all lives didn't matter. Because I believe right. all lives matter. All lives matter. Right. But nobody wants to put the focus on anything. It's just like I had a conversation with a person the other day. And they were like, oh, why are y'all against all them statues? You want to get rid of them statues? And I said, well, well those statues didn't come up to reconstruction. Huh? What? Reconstruction? What's reconstruction? And it was a mind game. Go back and do some of your own history. Right. You so do your own history. So my thing is, I'm going to start reading the GOP playbook. But we as a people, we got to do a better job for ourselves. I'm sorry. Y'all got to have to figure it out. All of us. Some of us need to take some responsibility and tell some of these people that once they become dependent on the system, they stay on the system. They want you to be on the system. You think you're getting some free something, you ain't getting nothing free. Free, yep. But you think it's free until they tell you you got to go out and do this and you got to go out and do this and you can't do it. And then what do you yep. do? You go to the community that don't have anything and take from them. Take from them. Yep. And I agree with you, Richard. We got to stand up and take charge of our communities. We got to say, if you don't do what we want or what we desire, we're voting you out. We're, we're black, white, Democrat, or Republican, we're voting you out. And we have to support our elected officials. If if we support and those, them, then we need to support them. There's no question we need to support. We need to support our friends. Yeah. And sometimes they're our friends and, you, and we treat them worse than we treated the person that kicked us in the butt. Yeah. And we're going to stop all that. Mm hmm Young people are looking at us. They ain't saying much, but they're looking at us. And yeah. if we be leaders and we're going to be pillars in our community, we have to start acting like adults and acting yeah. like adults taking some responsibility to the plight of where we're going. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, think about it. Kids can't go to school. 
They got enough now. We already accused them of that they ain't getting, they're not learning, reading, and writing. We accuse the we accuse the education system of that half the time. That's what we do. But yeah. what, do we go to school board meetings? Mm -hmm. Do you realize, ladies and gentlemen, since this whole COVID thing, we educational wise are either further behind than we were. Yeah. I know this for a fact. There are some kids who have passed along, passing. Okay, you're in the fifth grade today, you're going to sixth grade. You're in the sixth grade today, you're going to the seventh grade. But yet you can only read it to third grade. So what happens when they get to 12th grade? What yeah. happens when you have to take, fill out an application or whatever? What happens to them? We've done a disservice to them. So we need to take a responsibility of our plight. But guns and killing one another and grieving on both sides, that's a tragedy. Yeah. Just think about this, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody go to the grocery store. I ain't saying on the right side tracks, wrong side tracks, they went to the grocery store. And some yep. of them will not come back. Yep. When kids went, children went to school. They won't be coming home. Yep. Watching, what, the, watching a movie at the school. And what are we going to do about it? Are we going to be like the rest of them and don't talk about it? and don't demand certain responsibility from our elected officials. Is that what we're gonna do? It's on you, on myself, it's on all of us. You hear yeah. me how it takes a village? I just think that we have to suck it up. And say, you know what? I remember when we had thriving communities. Because we had thriving communities because we supported one another. We had thriving communities because of we never heard that foolishness. Crabs in the barrel. No. We have to become smarter. Yes, Tony. So yep, Tony, you're right. What do you have to say in the last few minutes? Well, time is already gone. We're almost over. I know we had such a good time, Richard. You know, we always have a good time every time we get together. But I think, as you said before, it's just time for us to stand up and uh, take charge of our communities. So everybody, let's rise up. It could be for anything. Our communities, regardless. Whether we decide that we're not going to let trash fly up and down the street. Yeah. Or we're not going to look out and see some little kid wandering around and lost, and we don't say, do they need help? We have to band together and work together for the good of not only us, but as far as all mankind is concerned. Yep. Yeah. I am so troubled by all these shootings. And you know, everybody gets, you see it and you go, oh, and then a week later, they don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. They don't talk about what happened down at the churches, synagogues. They're shooting all over. That's right. Folks shooting Asians, shooting everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a one person, they're shooting everybody. That's right. So it's not just one. Yep. And, each, and each group is stepping up to their own community. The Asians are saying enough is enough. Yep. And they should. And we should say enough is enough. We have enough symbols now. We talk about all these symbols that down south that you had people that shouldn't have had monuments. Look at 
the tragedy monuments we have now and keep those in mind. And let's do something about it. I've been to South Street. Many of you have been to South Street. Little girl was shot in Pittsburgh. Little baby, ain't nothing to do with it. Dead. People go to grocery store, place of worship. Go to place of worship is supposed to be the most peaceful place that you can go. Yep. Who ever thought that you had to have somebody at the door watching to see if somebody got a gun or see somebody, some lunatic coming? We ain't never saw that. The door was nope. open to everybody. Everybody. Why? Because we were taught peace and love. So I want to leave all of you tonight with peace and love. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to turning in in a couple of weeks, but I'm going to always have these kind of conversations. And me and Tony are going to have some more conversation. We ain't done. We're going to have a lot of conversation. I know some of you don't like what we say. I know you don't. But guess what? We all speaking the truth. And what they say back in the day, truth will set you free. Have a good evening. Good evening. Thank you for joining the Richard Evans Show on The Voice 17104. We will be here on Voice 17104 every first and third Tuesday from 6.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Once again, thanks for viewing. Remember to visit us on Facebook at Richard Butler, and we welcome your questions and your comments.